Uh, <laughs> call the meeting to order at 7.17 p.m. Do we want to do introductions? Sure. Elaine Campbell, School Committee Vice Chair, Conway. Judy Siciliano, Principal. Patty Cavanaugh, Director of Business Services. Marty Barrett, Superintendent. Carl Anderson, School Committee. Phil Cantor, Member. <laughs> Ira Ben, Member. <laughs> and Jan Warner, our Chair, is unable to be here this evening. So first off, we need to vote on our minutes of April 7th. Motion to approve the minutes of April 7th. Second. <coughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Uh, financial statements? Okay, you have and before warrants. you. Uh, well, okay, we'll start with the warrants. You have six warrants to sign tonight that total $31,038.32. Judy, did you bring the lunch warrant? Yes, I think I'm Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Um, your financial report for um, April is also attached. Um, and one thing I do want to bring to your attention is on the bottom of page one, I've encumbered um, the principal, the retiring principal sick pay buyback, so that we will. Oh we, God, we have to buy that back. Yes, her? and she no. never took a sick day. No. God love her. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is on national television. <laughs> national? <laughs> International. International. Uh, um, so we'll be able to pay for that from electricity savings and our um, the fuel um, adjustment clause in our busing has saved us to date ten thousand five forty four. So I am not um, I'm not concerned that we will not you know finish the year in the black. I just want to bring it to your attention that we did encumber it. Um, and then on page two, we're running over in the school choice. Um, and we'll know what we're, um, I'll know better as we get closer to the end of the year if we have money to z make that zero so that we don't spend into next year's funds. So I'll be watching that as well. Um, that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Are we looking at having other extra funds that we need to spend down before the... I won't know that until we get closer to next month. Okay. And then uh, I will talk with the principal. Oh, I do know that we're going to have one other expenditure. I believe uh, we talked about it at the last meeting. Uh, it is the principal's wish that if we do anything first is to buy the new principal new office furniture. Oh, right. I believe you all agreed with that. Um, yeah. And the new principal will be coming to visit and um, Wednesday. So she will... Um, you have the catalog, okay. Do you want Baker Supply to come up maybe, or? If you think. So they can well, measure it? get it while we'll come <laughs> Hey, you started it. You started it. <laughs> we can talk about it offline. <laughs> but the course still has to match the view of the cows out the window. Right. Country. Country decor. Okay. Any other financial questions? Onward. Um, warrants are set. Uh, any public comment? No public. Uh, unfinished business. I don't believe we have any, so we're on to new business. And we have policies. Um, Marty? I, I tried take to pass these out to the uh, Waitley School Committee and, and they didn't want to take them. So I'm <laughs> offering them to you. Um, basically, uh, Ira is our rep on our policy subcommittee. We have policies D through J to vote on tonight. Tomorrow night we will complete L and K and we are done. Wow. The entire policy book is revamped and will be online. Um, I sort of like Don's suggestion at the joint meeting back in April when he said the policy subcommittee has worked very hard on this and that school committee will take their recommendation. Their recommendation is that you approve policies D through J tonight. 
But if you would like, I'll start reading. Yeah, start reading, Carl. <laughs> Let us know what you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I could say firsthand they were done diligently with a lot of meetings. And I look forward to being on the policy committee next year. Because <laughs> yes. it'll be a piece there of cake. be a yeah. policy committee. Right. <laughs> That's why he's going to join us. Wow. <laughs> Count him in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know the new superintendent expressed her gratitude that cause she was at the meeting, yep. at the Frontier meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I said she owes Marty a lot of cookies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So... <laughs> It was it it was an it was an important thing to do. You could have done it so easily, but Marty, it really so. is important, mm -hmm. and That's so right. I'm glad oh. we did it. And it's um, impressive. And I'm glad that it's almost finished. Yeah. So. That's great. Well, thank you for your hard work, Ira and Marty. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Is the mask woman still showing up at each one of these? Yeah. 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 And her assistant. Sometimes. And her assistant. Yeah. Most of the time. Is it? So. She's retiring too. Right? Yeah. It's <laughs> a good question. Marty didn't make that request. I didn't make that request. <laughs> I think it's a nice desk I have. <laughs> she gave her policy book instead. You I'm gave her furniture. Her, she gave her a new I'm policy book. I'm leaving her my lamp <laughs> and my chair. <laughs> Can we vote them all together yes. in one big clump? Yes, you can, you can vote this approved policy sections D through J. So can I get a motion to approve policies <coughs> D, D through J? I, I'm, sure, yeah, I'll second that. I move we uh, approve as, as submitted. All in favor? Aye. 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 Take it on for some good night time reading. But actually, you can't take it home. Oh. Donna said oh. that I could pass them out tonight, but I must Bring them back. To peruse in between <coughs> conversations. That was a really pointless uh, idea. That you know, was. it was. It's because a symbolic act. I realized that it was a lot of effort to get these and bring these back. Wow. It's a showing of evidence. You know, Not what to mention the fear physical labor. You might actually read it. So mm -hmm. you you take a, a copy. I wrote will autograph it for you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> To fill with love. Yes. Right. I'll wait till it's on the website. Thank you. It's probably you must have through. trouble sleeping, so that will help, I guess. So that was approved for? Approved. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, on to the teacher's agreement. The teacher's agreement, I pass those out to you. So the front section is the teachers, and the back section is the instructional assistants. Uh, Phil was our diligent representative for this um, negotiations group. Um, I will tell you that it was a very lengthy negotiation for the teachers. We started in October and we didn't finish until the end of March. Um, I would like to ask you for your thoughts about that, about the length of it and, uh, it, it, uh, and it, about it, lessons it, maybe for next time uh, to pass on to uh, the, the, the new driver. Yeah, I, I was told, I told the Waitley School Committee, I thought it was interesting because honestly it was my first contract negotiation. Except for Bob Paula, everybody on the committee, or were you on the other one? Yeah, I was on the other one. Okay, so we had two people who had been on others, but everybody else was new. And we had two separate attorneys, but who were both new to us, two brothers. And the elementary teacher's negotiation was extremely lengthy, and I thought it was not a fault of the teachers, but it was who represented the teachers. And the others have gone very quickly, and the others all have had different MTA representation. Consistent, the same person, but not the same as the teachers. So they came in, and i asking for a lot, and we ended up reaching an agreement, but we gave very little um, of any financial consequence to the district. Um, but I really, and I don't know how you feel about this, Bill, but I felt that most of the things that were asked for were asked for by the attorney and not our teachers. And, uh, okay, I think that our own attorney was uh, not as much at fault in, all, in the mm -hmm. delaying uh, thing as, as the other one, but was up there in responsibility. And um, I think that we're in a situation where both of our representatives have agendas that don't always dovetail with our own. 
that they have larger <clears throat> statewide agendas for that, that 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 they perceive statewide significance in certain clauses um, that we ourselves and the union do not attach any significance to. Correct. And I so agree. and so we ourselves could come to an agreement like that, but we're being prevented by our attorneys who each have a point to prove um, using us. And that, that there was one thing in particular, one clause, and I, I talk about this generally, so it's okay to talk about, and that is, um, and, and it was really something that held up for weeks. And it was a, a, a clause in the contract that involved an unsettled area of law, mm. where the state has passed the law, but there's not yet any case law or any uh, uh, interpretation of what that law means. So um, each attorney had their own sense of what the law should mean. And we were sort of in the place where um, we didn't really, not, neither side really cared what the law meant, and it wasn't even that important to either one of us. But to them, especially to the union rep, this was like, uh, be, and, and it was because in the grand scheme of things, we were one of the first ones to go through the negotiations mm -hmm. and test this clause. But we were sort of like a test tube guinea pig that kind of a thing for these <clears throat> lawyers to work out. And whatever that, happens first is what's going to continue out throughout right, the United States. So right. no one's going to move. Right. And that's how it was. In the end, I will tell you that Sue Siegel and I said, we probably could have negotiated this contract in two hours. And Sue and I. Yeah. So my, my last time the attorney we had, I thought was great and very this efficient. He was a very very good attorney. I, his professional abilities. You know, the, oh yeah. I, mean, yeah. I would definitely call him back and <coughs> whatever. But mm -hmm. but uh, he has a shop to do. You know, their their representation of us involves in their eyes a whole statewide viewpoint. Yeah. Um, which we only barely fit into some of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and um, so you know my suggestion for next time would be to start the contract out with the main prince with the superintendent and the union head having a beer or having a cup of coffee. <laughs> Seriously, no, beforehand. No, I'm serious. Sue and I could have done that. And beforehand, yeah. just and, and and it's something where you, you can shake hands, saying mm -hmm. none of the whatever we're about to say does not get repeated, and. Uh, and, and you just try to do what you can to advance the process because mm -hmm. we were sort of at the mercy uh, and paying uh, right, all along, paying people. both sides mm -hmm. uh, to work out their their issues. Right. And I think one it, the way it resolved really it didn't all come together until we stopped scheduling further meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it, really, it was, it was hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, in the end, the points that were settled on is a contractual, and this is for elementary teachers, uh, one, 2.5, 2.5 over three years. Um, we increased the head teacher's salary, which is minimal impact for the district since there's only four of them. Um, we added a new column, a uh, pay column for those people who have masters plus 45 or CAGs. Um, and that was about it. To me, uh, all that's not even as important as what we kept, which was we kept a sense of trust between the union and the administration. And yeah. we kept a sense of we're rowing the same boat on the same side and, you know, we're not at cross purposes. It's not an us versus them. It was a very collegial, so. and it was very warm, and there was a lot of handshakes and hugs oh, at the end. I never got the sense of, I think they felt heard, and I thought our group heard them, and so I thought it was a well done contract. The instructional assistants, uh, their big concern was equalized pay um, because it's very difficult for holiday time period, you know, right. to have their pay fluctuates. That was their big during the break. Yeah. So we negotiated that. They require now that IAs, this is not problematic, I don't think at Conway, but it is in some of the other schools, um, on early release Fridays, 
must stay. In the past, they could leave uh, when the kids left and take a personal day. Okay. But now they, they cannot. And that was their BIA's request to do that. So um, the instructional assistant contract, I thought, went fairly quickly and fair, fairly pleasantly. And not that the teacher wasn't unpleasant, but after about four or five months of this, it was, it it's was, a little old. It was long. So The other thing that I'd like to specifically note is that you're the, the people that you selected to be on both of these mm -hmm. uh, things, um, it, those were good choices. They were good people. And, yeah. be, and I'll just compare it with the previous mm -hmm. contract that I was a part of. Some of the people on there, two of them at least, had an agenda to uh, minimize pay no matter what, right. no matter what evidence or facts. And there was no, there was nobody on these committees with private no. agendas. And um, I think that that might be an overlooked kind of a, uh, th that that's really important to have right. people, to, to put people on there that aren't, no, they didn't have a personal vendetta. They did not have a personal preconceived idea. They were there for the good of the district. And um, yeah, I think they were looking out for the and good. That, that's right. something else to pass on to this right. because I, mean, I, I read the paper and there's people running Deerfield Selectmen. You know, this is the, 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 their premise on running is mm -hmm. I could have built the roof for one million instead of three million. Right, right. And I. <clears throat> Yeah. Town politics. Town politics. And, so, but, but I mean, it, we're, yeah. just, we're just one person away. One right. person is all it takes to really change right. the whole mood and everything else of these contracts. Thank God the funding agreements in place. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have the elementary uh, contracts that have been agreed upon and ratified. Um, the high school instructional assistants are done. And we have a meeting Thursday for high school teachers. And hopefully that will go. We've had three meetings thus far, so this I think will be our fourth. So I am going to be asking for um, a vote and ask for Elaine to sign as chair okay. for the contracts that we have okay. before you. Any so, questions that we have? So we want to go in order of the first vote on the 2016 2019 teachers' agreement? Sure. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I ask for a vote on the ratification of the 2016-2019 Instructional Assistance Agreement. Motion mm -hmm. to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. That's it for now, right? Correct. And now there's a vote here for the town treasurer to establish a checking account not to exceed $10,000 to be known as a student activity checking account to be operated by, oh, so she's going to have $10,000 slush money too? And new furniture? Anything else? New color. I wonder if Jan put that on. Jan did, yeah, it's Jan. So should we be bold? Is, yeah, this is a vote that Jan put on. Um, so I cannot elaborate. Okay. Can I read it? <clears throat> oh, you don't know, have Oh, okay. To be operating controlled by the Conway Grammar School principal from which funds may be expended exclusively for student purposes. Yes, so this was something that Jan and I spoke about um, because right now they don't have a student activity account set up so that the principal can access the funds. It is a new state law. We put all our principals through. Um, it, it, it's a revised state law. Um, the, the principal should be the fiscal agent, not the town treasurer. Um, so this would be the means that Judy would, from all the activities, candy, well, we don't do candy sales, candle sales, whatever, would go, it'd be deposited with the treasurer, but Judy has the, will have the ability, or the new principal will have the ability to write the checks out as the money is dispersed. Sorry. <laughs> new furniture, $10,000. That's what I said. Judy, you're leaving at a wrong time. Jeez. <coughs> I used to sell candy bars for Yeah. <laughs> for the slush fund. 
So um, I did discuss that with Dan. <coughs> it is in line with the new with the legislation, and um, all of our schools will hopefully be going to that. And we did put our principals through a lengthy training. Remember Marty with Mark Abrahams? Mm -hmm. um, that lasted over a day. It, it was lengthy. It was lengthy. So they know the ups and the downs. And this is the something that only the principal can sign for, and nobody yes. else. And Correct. And I'm sure just read the reports on cash controls and. Right. So I'm sure there'll be some control checks and balances yes. on it. So the, you're just asking to establish the account. You're not asking to deposit any monies into this account. Well, the monies would still get deposited with the treasurer. The principal will have access to, te to, to, the, to the most of $10,000. So like at Frontier, we have about $170,000 um, um, uh, in student funds. But Darius cannot write a check for more than $10,000. So it limits what they okay. can access at one time. Uh -huh. So this is so if, if, they, if the fifth grade raised money so that they can go to New York City, and well, they they're year. going to New York City, and they need a check to get into the Bronx Zoo, you can write the check for the entrance fees for the Bronx Zoo so that you could take it with you. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if we, we trust yeah. people with our children, we should be able to trust them with Well, it absolutely dollars. makes sense because what's been happening is that teachers have to use their own credit right. card. Right, and that gets crazy. And then get reimbursed, and then the time it's, fashion is. It's yeah. just humiliating, that's all. It's not even totally crazy, agree. it's just right. demoralizing and humiliating. Well, then I think we could vote on this time. Uh, yes, okay. I'd be happy to make it. Well, first I'll ask for a vote for the to authorize the town treasurer to establish a checking account not to exceed ten thousand dollars. I'd like to make a motion myself that we do that. I'll second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Reports. Um, oh wait, you skipped me. Non-union salary. Right not on there. Non-union salary recommendations. Oh, discussion that? items. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're not voting on it tonight. We're just bringing okay. it. Okay. So that was the page that was in color. It has to be okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. And the color piece is is related to the um, people in the Conway building. Mm -hmm. The no, no, second saw. page is the um, administration in the, in the central office. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. I'm talking yet. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, that way. Um, <laughs> the. the when I, I, I just I saw that and I st af even after this year's raises to see that we're still paying people under twelve dollars an hour is shocking to me. And uh, it, would it be possible the, the the person that's under twelve dollars an hour can is it possible to bump that okay, up? Okay, that's over $12? a mistake. Okay, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So. Um, Everyone's in here at 2% with a couple of um, exceptions. One, um, which doesn't affect our budget, is uh, Janet Seretico. Uh, Seretico, I cannot say that name. She was hired at $55,000 a year and was promised $3,000 increase when she finished her <coughs> bachelor's degree, which she did. So she's going up to $58,000, so your share is $5,800. Now this all gets paid from the tuitions. And these people down below were given a 2% raise plus a dollar because the beginning salary is $10.1050 and, and the minimum wage goes up to $11 in January. Okay. So we're just making the dollar adjustment now. That same adjustment should have been made to Jeannie Boyden. It should say plus a dollar there. It should say $12.96 oh, okay. for her because we're also adjusting the beginning salaries of our, our people in the, in the cafeteria okay, as well. Good. So she should say $12.96 an hour. Um, everyone else is um, as is. And um, if you look at the top, only sixteen seventy seven is what will get added to our budget, um, and that was budgeted for. Okay, so that's the, the it'll, our budget will be sixteen seventy seven higher. Um, actually, it won't. It'll still be lower based on what our new principal is coming in at and what our old principal. There was some savings there, although I still haven't seen the figure. I was told there were savings. 
<laughs> on the second page is the admin. I think it's better to say former. Former instead of old. Old. <laughs> We're feeling old enough. So. Sorry, yeah, former. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what? She said she's just about at it. Ten thousand dollars less fun. New furniture. Old principal. I mean, really. If you come up with oh, our fund for the new principal, we're out of here. So, you know. Uh, I'm so sorry. Current principal. Gold American Disneyland. Express cards. Yeah. You know. um, so, on the admin page, everyone's at 2% with the exception of Scott Paul, and I will let Superintendent Barrett address that. So, I, and I had this discussion with the Waitley School Committee. This is an increase of 5%, and this is why I feel so strongly about this. When I did a poll of other area IT directors, uh, he was not in line. When he started, our district, technology-wise, was on the precipice of going into 3 by 5 card system. We were, I'm serious, we were... Held um, together by rubber bands it, it was, and paper clips, not It was kidding. a disaster. He has um, brought true. us back. He has assembled a team. He has a plan to go forward. Um, I don't want this district to lose him, and I don't think this district and central office really wants to have another um, centralized uh, personnel hire. Um, his, his position, I feel, affects everybody in the district more than any other central office position that I can think of. I have had other administrators come up to me and say, I will forego my raise as long as he gets, as long as he gets a, a substantial increase. So um, I know this is sometimes difficult when you are singling out one particular person. Um, but I really think it's a direction you need to go in. Um, and, and I'm advocating because they don't have anyone to advocate for them. They don't have a union. They don't have steps. Um, this is the only op opportunity they have for increased pay. All right. My, you know, my observation on this is that we, this is only ever a one-way street. That we take, we are, we make ourselves aware of the people that are underpaid, but we do not address the structural. Uh, 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 positions that are dramatically overpaid, um, and that's that's my take on that. You know, and I, it, you, it, it's really difficult to do that because you can't just you know, a, a, a title is a human being and is a person. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I mean, I, I I do a lot in the world of grants and grant writing and grant and, and um, you know, a grant bookkeeper. Uh, wow do we pay our grant bookkeeper well um, that's, oh you're talking okay I was and, talking and, and, and that's you know that's we should have two grant bookkeepers for that price we really should that's a and, and the whole idea of having that type of position as a career position instead of rotating out every five or ten years and getting new sets of knowledge and new sets of contacts and new opportunities and, you know, he's a be, bookkeeper, not a writer. No, not he's, a actually, writer. he's actually, an, we're, we're not saying, we're saying a, he's a degreed accountant. And he's our grant guy. And but I also say you have to be careful with that, Phil, because some of these people have been here 25 and 30 years. And, and so it's it's also a reflection of, of longevity. And, and, so and there's a reason that up. we get no grants and no grant applications to any private companies or because it's out of his... That's not. It's not his job to go find grants. It's his job to account for the grants. It is the curriculum the numbers directors. Numbers of the grants, not it's, the. It's the curriculum directors. It's the principals. It's everyone else that should be seeking the grants. It's his job to account for the grants and know how to account for the grants for federal legislation, state legislation, um, and how to report them correctly. I mean, I've met the guy. I like him. I don't. I don't have any. I mean, I know he's well liked. I don't have any it, him personally, mm -hmm. but. Um, there are positions on this that if you look and if you compare with other organizations, we overpay. Um, just saying, and that we should look at this, we should, it's fair to look at the people that are underpaid, mm -hmm. and it's also fair to look at the people that 
uh, have become structurally overpaid. That's all. Okay. But I do want to point out is that there is longevity involved in some of these people that, and they have been here for over 20 years. So, and maybe it's, their titles are, are, need to be updated. It's not always a good thing. Mm -hmm. Every position. You know, what do you do, fire someone because they've been here too long? Uh, I think you might have a lawsuit if you did that. <laughs> you can f these are at-will employees that can be hired or fired for any reason at all, or no reason. That's true, but if somebody's doing a good job and they continue to stay for 20 plus years, I would, I would think that institutional memory is a good thing. It, if you look at the area of grants in particular, that is one that they tell organizations to cycle those positions that you get new contacts, new information, um, and that... But he's not writing grants. He's not the grant yeah. writer. And it's probably it's just title. crunching the numbers it's on the grant. the grant. I call him the grant accountant. He does all the special revenue well, funds. That, and then that's the name rather than grant bookkeeper. Right. Well, that's my fault because I do want them to be... I, I, I don't want them to ref be referred to as bookkeeper because they all are accountants. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I, everyone else is a 2% except for Scott Paul. You're not voting on anything tonight. You're voting in June okay. because the request came a couple of years ago that we would just bring this to you in June and you would have no opportunity to absorb or, okay. or discuss the information. Okay. So, he's um, doing a fine job, though. He's right. doing a great job. He is doing a great job. And inherited a mess. Yeah. And he inherited Boy, did he ever. So. And being an IT a director level person in IT is still... Value. Yes. Yes, it is. The yes. Yeah. Yes, I know that. Um, and and people take jobs with school systems um, for other reasons than just getting wealthy, and I accept that. Um, so, but I think he should be in line with other school systems, and that's what my attempt is: I agree. is to make sure that our central office, our administrative team, are in line with other school systems. Um, Does he work through the summer? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's a full year employee. Yeah. They do a lot of stuff over. The yeah, summer. they do a ton of stuff over yeah. the summer. So that that's all on my okay. point for that. Okay, is that it for you, Patty? Yes. Okay. So back to reports. Um, collaborative did not have a meeting, but we're working on the executive director's evaluation. Marty, do you have input on that too? On the evaluation, yes, I've already completed my evaluation. Oh, of so I'll be doing mine later tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get the gold star. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, What's about a, the collective doing a marketing campaign for public ed? The collaborative. The, the collaborative, collaborative doing a marketing campaign for public oh, ed. Oh yeah, they're very involved in that. I mean, I, I love that idea. That is sorely needed. Yeah. That, I will tell you, came out of the rural consortium meeting. Yeah. That um, because there's so much money being spent by charter schools, and we're doing very little to advocate, not for a particular school, but for public education in general, right. locally. So that's what they're kind of spearheading. I which, think it's a great Which idea. brings me, I mean, our town meeting is coming up on Monday, and I know um, it's just a, sort of a segue to this, but. Um, it's going to be a, you know, the, the town, uh, all indications are it's going to be a pretty copacetic uh, meeting. You had a pre-meet today, right? We did today. have a pre-meet, and maybe, I don't know if Jan's going to that. Maybe that's where she's at. I don't know if Jan went to the pre -meet. No, she had, no an she had a family thing. Oh, okay. Right. There were a lot of cars there, though. Well, the, because we say, the, the budget here was modest enough that the town's buying themselves a fire truck, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which... So so so, 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 Judy could have used that fire truck. Right. Make sure you use the fire truck. <laughs> Which, so, so, I mean, so, no but basically that you have a lightning rod, a controversy, whatever, and right. so, so the anticipation would be that this would be passed. But my homeowners but, go down then? But it, I just wanted to let you know that I still wanted to um, ask, um, to, I still intend to stand up and ask for you to, to speak to the group, and I'm going to ask for you to speak to the meeting. This, just because, uh, I know, I know, I, I know, but uh, because the, it's... What would you have me say? Farewell, I love you. And, oh. and, and... Uh, do the Obama thing? Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's it. Seriously, I don't, oh. Because you'll have a microphone. Dude, that's it. This is your chance. 
do the do the Obama thing at town meeting. Please do it. Oh, uh, that would be wonderful. But um, I don't think the sound people are gonna. No, that would be so fantastic to stand there and say, Ciciliano, ah, drop the microphone. Oh, I'll do it. Uh, um, Next. Um, but, but, you know, just for a minute, just to say how much you've enjoyed your... Da, 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 I and, did my TV thing again this year. I know, but, but, um, but and, and just to give a spiel about how... How, how great you know, she is. How, how great the school is, and send, you, and send your kid to... The, and say, this is the... Ch town meeting, aside from everything else, is your greatest exposure, the greatest number of parents and community members. Mm -hmm. And I like to hear somebody say... To marketing. It, Ooh. It, to market. And okay. Bring your kid. Put It's great school. Send your kid. Yeah. I did get a chance to do that at Sunderland the other night to tell them that they had to add money to their budget because there's so few kids going out in charter and choice that they had to add money to the local budget or they wouldn't do net, net school spending. So they didn't like the 10% increase in their budget, but they liked the message, I think, that yeah. our kids are coming to Sunderland Public Schools. Great, Marty. We could do. Um, I think it's. I think it's the sound uh, from the sound of music. Goodbye, farewell. Oh, Goodbye, farewell. Why am I doing that over on TV? Don't give it away. Oh. <laughs> Don't give it away. Cut that part. We could do that. We could do. We need more than two of us. We have to do all the parts. <laughs> oh, we could. We could walk out that way. Yeah. And then we could just leave. <laughs> and and the, um, the fellow that always complains that we leave after the budget, he, yeah. could, he could stand up and say, <laughs> see, even yeah. now, they're doing it. He always, votes the, he always votes no for the budget anyway, and then complains that you leave right after the vote. <laughs> Judy, I'm going to hold you to this. Great. What do we have to lose? We're not getting new furniture. We're, <laughs> We're not <laughs> <coughs> Excellent. All our, right. our budgets will have been passed by after the budgets are passed, not right. before. Okay. Arrange it, Phil. All right. Principal's report. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, the yeah, I signed them all, Fran. Did you really? You did. You did. You I haven't. It. I haven't gotten them yet. <laughs> okay. We'll pass them on to you later. Oh, Phil. I like your. He did oh, sign it. Is it uh, it's working its way down. Are you next, Kurt? Uh, no. No. I'm just growing my hair long. I'm just going to push it. Good morning. No white patches for you yet. From June. Okay, Thank you, dear. <laughs> oh, do you need a cup? I need no, another cup. Oh, oh, oh. I, 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 I thought it was more than one page, so. Oh, I thought it was too. Okay. Can you please give our old principal uh, your attention? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she even spam her. She's close. <laughs> building and grounds and furniture. No, building and grounds. Uh, during the April break, Bruce did repair a number of those overhead light fixtures in the gym. They're not so much the, the light itself, but the the fixture portion can mm -hmm. can sometimes be hit by basketballs and whatever else is in there. So he fixed those. And I just wanted to, once again, really note the frontier custodians, if we call them and ask for um, whatever we ask for, they, they're more than uh, accommodating. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to them. Uh, I think the hallway carpet was also shampooed <coughs> right before month season. <laughs> um, I talked to Bruce about power washing the fence. There's a fence on the right-hand side of uh, the road, the driveway leading to the back of the building, which has really become pretty unsightly. Um, so that's a project that will be done probably uh, in the next couple of weeks or so. He and I are also creating a list of uh, sort of tentative projects that probably need to be done around the school just so that when the new principal comes on board um, she can have that list and um, whatever she wants with it. <laughs> Not necessarily the young principal, but the new, <laughs> the new young principal. I um, never said whole, really. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it started with the uh, 
pain me for that. Like, <laughs> right down, downhill from there. Uh, we have May Day today. It's sort of an annual, oh, become an annual event. Don't you come? No, no, I usually do come. So lots of people not really day, work though. behind the scenes to, to make this happen. A lot of parent volunteers, <laughs> Katrina Neal's is always helpful. Arlene teaches the dance, uh, the dances to the children and to the staff. Um, so they always begin from the far end of the building and the more dancers lead all the classes one by one uh, down today to the gym because of the weather. And <clears throat> when they get to the gym, there's a lot of singing, dancing. The sixth grade does um, two special dances mm -hmm. since they're graduating. Um, the staff does the same dance every year. Um, and, and they have it down now. <laughs> and then we have eight years. Um, <laughs> It's actually wonderful, uh, a wonderful event, and PTO provides ice cream for the kids. So a big thank you to all who make that possible, especially teachers and students. Teachers have to take a little time off out of the day to go over the songs and so forth. Um, the Academy of Charlemagne uh, has a newly formed course that Katrina Neals is developing. So they came and performed for us April 25th. Uh, it also, the course includes three graduates from Conway, so, so, so it's a combination of um, some proselytizing <laughs> recruiting <laughs> and, and an opportunity to um, sort of acknowledge our, our kids who are singing. Our own kids uh, loved it. It was actually really very, very entertaining. That's um, a word. 20 <laughs> Seriously. A little proselytizing. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Um, we try to keep them at bay as much as possible. <clears throat> April 27th, Frontier students gave a wonderful panel presentation to our fifth and sixth graders uh, discussing digital devices, particularly iPhones. Um, fifth and sixth graders were, were riveted and uh, asked some really good questions. The kids from Frontier were very, very informed. Um, answered the questions carefully and gave a number of little suggestions to the to the children one that that I thought was could be really helpful one frontier student said you know if I'm on my iPhone for more than 25 30 minutes it beeps and I stop and I actually take a 10 minute break rather than just keep going and going and I was sort of looking at our fifth and sixth graders who you could see were registering, hmm, that might not be a bad thing mm -hmm. to do. So they gave a number of uh, suggestions to our kids. They were very good. Uh, this was just to jump in, organized by Maureen Belchie. It was throughout yes. the district. I heard wonderful feedback. And when I spoke to her today, the plan is to continue this next year because the peer-to-peer -peer influence yeah. was really impressive. Yeah. This is an area, it's amazing to me uh, uh, just how difficult it is for a young person to be a good digital citizen and to make good decisions, um, uh, like consistently good decisions in this area. There are so, mm -hmm. this is a really complicated area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really complicated. It is complicated. Annually this would be great, so yeah, yeah. I'm, really yeah. I'm glad that she's going to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. All right. and <clears throat> Each of the students kept coming back to the safety aspect and that when they're in doubt, they go immediately to their parents. And that was very impressive for mm -hmm. our kids. That mm -hmm. changes. <laughs> that changes in a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> I can wait. She's still up. Don't undo. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, <clears throat> we had our school show on the 14th. Always well attended. That was great. It was really good. I liked it. Uh, the theme was immigration and the contributions that immigrants have made um, to the country. So a thank you to Janet. There's a school show committee uh, made up of teachers who also help formulate what's actually going to happen. Teachers and students and uh, especially uh, to acknowledge the sixth graders and Rick Gifford who work with them to put on a number of skits about um, immigrants and also Jody Massa and the after school kids who did all the scenery. Uh, very beautiful sets. The sixth grade uh, 
versus the faculty basketball. It was lots of fun this year. Uh, sixth grade, barely we dealt with it. That was high a scoring. Win, a win over the um, <laughs> ever forceful staff. <laughs> Always at the in the last four minutes they win. Yeah, I don't know how that happens every year. So from the oldest to the youngest, there are 20 kindergartners registered for next year. Mm -hmm. I think all but two are actually all but one are homegrown. We have one mm -hmm. choice because a sibling is also at our school. So that's that's a little bit of an uptick for us in terms of kindergarten. Update. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had been going down like to 15, 16, but now we're back up to 20, which is pretty good. Uh, the 5K, should, this should be fun, not run, should be fun, walk, run. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's scheduled for <coughs> May 22nd, beginning at 9 a.m. from the center of town. All participants receive t-shirts, the funding for the shirts, uh, it's a combination of donations and local businesses, and also um, a nice grant that uh, the committee got from Tufts University. Uh, the grant was for $500 for an organization at Tufts called the Billion Mile Race Foundation. <clears throat> so everyone gets a t-shirt. And the logos of the local businesses are on the back of the t-shirt. I, I just want uh, also to let you know that all of this, sort of the, the once a week walking or running that the kids are doing on Tuesdays to, I think they have over 500 miles now, really all, uh, all of that is planned and executed by this committee. It's Paulette, Lepcha, Jen Wheeler, Joe Sermuddy, Jill, Maggie West, Jill Barnes, Maggie West, and Meg um, really do a lot of work they meet once every two or three weeks early in the morning and had planned all these events. Um, and they hope that the 5K fun walk run will be an annual event. Mm -hmm. But we have lots of families signed up for that, kind of families. Mm -hmm. um, many staff people uh, will be well represented. So it's a nice idea. Who organized the trail making committee? Making that, that, that was really that was fun too. Yeah. And that trail came together and like, have you watched it yet? No, it's I haven't. It's really cool. Is it the yeah. one around the school? Megan Gump. No, it goes in the woods behind the school. Oh. Are there ticks in there? <clears throat> they stomped them down. We raked them up. I don't go in tick areas. A lot of folks showed up for that. It was really cool. It was really cool. inspiring. How yeah. fast it came together with all those. And really cool. Yeah. It's a nice trail. They actually Is it? Yep. emailed a digital map of it. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I just got it today. That's awesome. That was fun. Marty, you're up. Yeah, I handed out to you my report. Um, just, you wanted to highlight again the rural consortium of superintendents. We continue to meet. We're meeting again next week, May 9th. Um, we have made the following recommendations. In fact, I had sent a letter to our local legislators with these uh, four points that um, we were supporting. This one was on the Waitley School Committee had asked me to, to do that on behalf of their school committee. We had suggested that districts only be responsible for $5,000 um, and we would spend, um, that should say spend, not send, um, spend that amount, uh, or send, I know this is right, to the uh, charter school and the difference in the per pupil cost would be assumed by the state. Rather than getting charged the 1850 or 20,000 or whatever, the charter schools are coming up with. Charters must first um, consult with the lo local superintendents to discuss any actual need for a charter prior to, prior to a charter being actually established. Um, charter schools must have local representation to serve on its board of directors and increased oversight on charter enrollment, financial impact, and student retention rates. None of these things are currently occurring, so but we're asking. Even for if more. they're implemented, would any of them affect? I mean, the I mean the, the things that I saw the, uh, the making charters talk to the superintendent of the sendings. Mm -hmm. The language that they use is things like send. So that would be you know that would be Greenfield or South Hadley or whatever. That still wouldn't be. No, it would be us. it prior to the establishment of a charter school. 
in the area that you want to establish it in, come talk to the superintendents of, of that area to find out what is it that you're providing. That we're not. That, yeah. How, how prove that you have a charter, <clears throat> a viable charter that isn't just academic in nature like the public schools provide. But none of that has occurred. And I, but I, I did just learn that uh, Representative Baez and Senator Chang Diaz, who were both on the Education Committee, um, said that despite everyone's efforts, it's unlikely that the Senate and House will bother with charter school legislation this year. So, and also what I had told Waitley earlier was that one of the things that I am starting to see is a break off in the language. They're referring more to charter schools in the urban areas as the urban charter school discussion. So I don't know if that's good or bad. So stay tuned. Bad. Could be. Um, April, as you know, was spent discussing the defending budgets. We've had three town meetings. Our final one is next week for Conway. Um, the Frontier budget is approved because we've had three of the four as part of our regional agreement. And I'm very pleased the principals have been very aggressive. I don't know that Judy's had too many hires for next year that you've had to do, but district-wide, because of so many retirements, um, they've been hiring some really fine people have had some terrific applicants. Um, so. I'm pleased with the language that I'm seeing from the applicants, you know, desirable district and the number of, of applications. I think for one first grade position here in Waitley, we got 108 applications. Oh my God. So we're getting lots and lots of, of applications. So I'm pleased about that. What does that say? We're wow. desirable. We're a desirable district to be in. Now, and that includes all the ones we get through school spring and you know so but your elementary classroom positions you see a lot of you see a lot of that so. Okay. so that's all i have great can i get a motion to adjourn motion motion second all in favor aye aye, aye.